Hey, welcome to the Graceful Insight channel. Today I'm going to show you how to replace the engine radiator on a 2012 Chevy Volt. So this is the second Volt I picked up. My 2013 is over there. This is a 2012. Uh, this will be the same procedure for 2011 through 2015. Uh, I picked up this Volt real cheap. I'm uh, planning on flipping this one. Uh, needs a engine radiator, the uh, two front wheel sensors, speed sensors are malfunctioning. Uh, needs a new windshield, you can see that it's cracked along there, maybe. Um, got a rock chip and the guy never fixed it. And then this uh, passenger mirror is busted, so I gotta replace that as well. Uh, so yeah, I'll show you guys how to do this um, and document my repairs on this and hopefully flip it for a pretty decent profit. Uh, first step is to uh, disable the high volt uh, battery and so that requires you to disconnect the 12 volt first and then the uh, high volt fuse in the uh, armrest. So I just disconnected the negative terminal there and then I'm going to put this little sock over the end of the terminal so it does not actually touch. So after pulling out this little glove box compart or the center console armrest compartment, you can press this button and it pulls out. So high volt battery is disengaged. The previous owner was a contractor and uh, worked outside a lot. And so this car is pretty filthy, unfortunately, but it should clean up well. Um, the next step is to drain the coolant. So I'll get started on that. Um, unfortunately, I got to remove the uh, auxiliary radiator as well to get to the engine radiator so all the coolant needs to be uh, drained. In order to drain the radiator you're supposed to uh, undo the sensor on, a, on the side the engine coolant temperature sensor on the side of the radiator and so in order to get to that you need to remove this uh, inner front wheel well. Ironically, it's it's kind of strange. So I've added coolant to it and it has dropped a little bit. Um, I've been driving it. It drives perfectly fine, but it does leak um, periodically and it, there's really no consistency with it. So um, one day I, I thought maybe the uh, shop he took it to was wrong and, it, and the radiator wasn't leaking. So I cleaned it all up it's you know nice and clean now and so I was able to kind of trace the the leak better if it started leaking again and sure enough um, see if I can get down here and show you so it's obviously leaking there's a spot right there so yeah right there at the corner of the radiator it's just kind of like weeping a little bit out of there and it doesn't happen all the time um, which is frustrating, but I guess kind of good. But I'm gonna go ahead and replace it anyways because I plan on selling this and I want it to be a good car for the next owner. So I'm gonna replace it and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. All right, the next step is to drain the coolant. In order to drain the coolant uh, from the engine radiator, you remove the engine coolant temperature sensor from the radiator. And I've done this already uh, obviously it's refilled and so I gotta drain it again and it is a way to empty it um, and drain it but it is pretty messy so um, I'm gonna do it again but I'll try to catch as much as I can with my drain pan and um, one note of caution is you know obviously to do it when it's uh, not hot and then second of all keep the radiator um, reservoir cap on it'll drain slower and um, it won't spray everywhere as it comes pouring out so 
I'll get us down to that step and then begin draining in. In order to access the um, temperature sensor, you gotta remove the wheel well housing, which I already did that. Here it is. Um, it's got these uh, four screws up the side. It's got two push pins. It's got these stupid annoying tabs up there that I would recommend not reconnecting because they're super annoying. And then you've got um, one, two, three, four screws down here that hold on the uh, um, air deflector. And then those are seven millimeters and these are eight millimeters. And then it'll pop off. And I'm going to go ahead and jack up the car to get more room and uh, get access to that temperature sensor. Sensors behind this tube here, it's right there. So you, there's like a little clip that unclips upward and then um, that sensor will pull out and coolant will come everywhere. So just be warned that's how it happens so that's where i'm gonna go right there so last time i used a screwdriver to pull up that clip i'm gonna try that again got the clip out So I'm going to release the uh, radiator cap and that fluid is going to come pouring out a lot faster now. That should be pretty much all the coolant out of the radiator. The next step is to remove the cooling fan shroud, but you got to do a lot of stuff to get to the cooling fan shroud. So, the uh, next step is to remove the drive motor battery radiator surge tank, which is the, these little tanks up here. So I gotta get that out of the way um, first to get to the fan shroud. Um, but I gotta take off, you know, all this other stuff first. So that's what we're gonna do next. So I'm gonna take off this plastic piece first and go from there. So I'm going to remove this top bracket here, so let's get rid of this air intake in there. So I'm going to work on getting that front bumper off now.
So now I should be able to take off this bracket here. So I definitely have access to it. It is you know, right here, along here. Got to undo those two little reservoirs that are mounting to it. I'm gonna go ahead and remove those surge tanks now. Get those out of the way. So I'm going to remove these upper mounting bolts of the radiator from the rest of the, the radiators. So the fan is finally loose. Now, the air conditioner radiator needs to be lifted up and forward as well off of the radiator. I'll show you here. So, yeah, right there is the uh, front radiator and then the main radiator and then the um, air conditioner so I gotta lift this up over this lip on both sides so unfortunately I am gonna have to remove this front radiator I looked into some things online and there's just no way to remove that back radiator uh, without removing this front one. So I got to remove this front one and then I can separate the AC condenser and the transmission cooler in between. Um, bring that kind of forward and separate them and then I'll be able to slide the, the big main radiator out. So 
what I'm gonna do next. I'm over here. Let's see if I can show you guys. So there's a bolt right here that you gotta undo. That's the transmission cooler. Um, that'll loosen that up. And then this little guy. Um, let's see. There, there's a little tiny reservoir right there. Um, and there's a little push pin um, through that hole that goes on to the radiator here, right here. That needs to come off. It's pretty hard to reach and get to. I ended up using some, um, yeah, pliers like this. So they bend, or they're bent, and I was able to slide that up through there and then pry it off. Oh yeah, here it is. So it's just a little plastic push pin. But those suckers are on there good, on there tight. So in order to remove this radiator, I need to empty it first. So I'm gonna take off that lower uh, hose on the left there underneath or above that bucket. And we're gonna empty the radiator and then I'll unhook the hoses and, and whatnot. The next thing that needs to come off is that driver's side headlight. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. All right, now I'm gonna carefully try to separate um, that front AC condenser from the uh, transmission cooler behind it and then wiggle out the main radiator. As you can see how this is oriented now. Now I should be able to pull out this radiator after I disconnect some hose and the air.
Alright, it should be able to come out now. job. Now, the trick is going to be getting a new one in. Man, what a freaking mess that is. Alright, that completes the removal. Um, I got to order the radiator part, the radiator. Uh, I just wanted to make sure I was going to be able to remove it without damaging anything else before I ordered parts. So, um, it's a pretty tough job. I, I've been working on my own cars for, I don't know, 15 years, and that was the most difficult radiator <laughs> removal of ever, any vehicle I've ever owned. So, it's doable, but man, it, uh, it kind of sucks. So, keep that in mind. Make sure you set aside plenty of time. It is not a quick, easy job. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below, and I will get to them as soon as I can. Thanks, and uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Why this radiator replacement is so difficult. So this is the back of the radiator. Uh, this is the main radiator for the engine, and you've got these tabs. So this tab here and that tab back there is what the uh, fan slides down into so that has to lift up and then back in order for this assembly to even move forward or up so that's part of the issue the other issue uh, is the front tabs so you got this front tab here and here and then you got the tabs down below these slots down below that the uh, that plastic shroud slides down into and it cannot come out uh, very easily uh, mainly because on this side you have the uh, uh, transmission cooler and those lines hit this side here it won't allow, allow the uh, plastic shroud to slide over and so you really just have to finagle uh, finagle the um, shroud, the radiator, or the transmission cooler, and the AC condenser kind of diagonally and up and over, and um, it makes it really difficult. But on this side here, there's a, um, it, there's like a little ledge on this side and a little ledge on this side. I think, well my, mine, this ledge on this side just kind of broke off um, and that actually made it easier uh, to slide over and so you might just consider um, kind of getting a Dremel and grinding off this little ledge here and this little ledge here off of the uh, plastic shroud that slides in there because then you can just come in from you know this side and just kind of you know slide it down in and it, it won't catch those little uh, those little ledges or notches on the side. Um, once you, if you're doing this job, you'll know what I'm talking about. So that part's really difficult. And then this side's super difficult because uh, you have to get the 
um, transmission cooler inside. Um, you gotta get the transmission cooler inside the shroud before it presses up against you know this whole assembly to give it room to slide down into this side. And if you can get it down onto this side, you can't get it onto this this end. And so it's got to kind of come together, together, uh, you know, at the same time, over and down. Um, it is, it's a chore, man. Um, yeah. And then, like you saw, you had to tilt the whole radiator um, on, you know, 90 degrees in order to even slide it out. So, and then to get it in, you got to turn it, you know, 90 degrees and slide it down. Um, and also make sure the uh, car is jacked up um, an appropriate height. You'll know once you, you know, get this thing turned on its side, um, if it's hitting the ground down here, you got to jack up the car higher. So, um, I ran into that issue as well. Getting it out, you know, you can bend and break this one, but uh, getting the new one in, you obviously want to get the, make sure the uh, car is high enough so you're not bending it uh, in order to, to pull it out. So yeah, that is, uh, this is the radiator out. I've got the new one in already. Um, it was a job. Not something I would want to do again, but I probably would because, uh, um, you know, I've got the experience now and uh, the dealer uh, will quote you about 1200 bucks or more to replace this, this thing so and I understand why it is quite a bit of labor.